All right, this is the notes to the bluebird. First, we're gonna tune down, take the low string and go one step lower. Whoops. And then the next string on the, the high E, do the same thing. Then the, your, the first beginning of the lead of the bluebird, uh, you go put your finger on um, the fourth um, fret there, go. And you can either go, or you can go, any, any way how you want to do it. that little flurry and that is just like over and over again so when you do that little hammer-on thing you could use a flat pick if that's what you like to Thumb pick, or just fingers. You use fingernails, or just no fingernails will work too. If you if you don't have fingernails, uh, so that's what that is. You just uh, detuning, and then that finger on the fourth fret on the G string, third one in there. Even if you went backwards, like you go. If, if you happen, if, if that happened to be easier for you, but you, as long as you have that half-step dissonance happening with the flurry of something, then uh, it makes the song sound like. A... So that's all that is. So to carry on, the next notes are so it's just like these notes be like just that third string in there, that G string on the second fret. It'd be like a D. If you imagine a D chord, you can go. And then imagine a C chord. And back to D. So it's notes, but you can imagine a chord if it helps. So just. Uh, Just over here, it's just however you want to hit it. Like it could be with a pick. All, or it could all be downs. Or it could be with a thumb pick. I like to, on this, I sometimes use a pick if when we play it live. Um, and then sometimes fingers. Um, because I'll forget either way. I'll have a pick and then after halfway through the lead I'll go, oh, and then throw the pick and play the rest with the uh, fingers or whatever. Um, but for, for here, just using the first finger as a pick works for me. So. Never made one of these things before. <laughs>
you just do this uh, so more of the little what some pe people call hammer-ons or whatever but uh, it's like a little you can probably go sure either way or with thumb um, so that would be this part of the song like uh, your first finger on like the what is that one? A string, the second fret, you can, by the way, you can hit other strings or not on this lead, so you can go, it, they just sort of once in a while like Sometimes, like when you're in hitting a D note here, it's okay to have some of the throw that low guy in there. It's just a big flurry of uh, thing, you know, uh, attitude or whatever. That's what there's a style is what makes that lead uh, happen. It, as far as which notes exactly, that's not too important. And I actually, uh, I veer off the lead that's on the original record. I, I veer off it at least about, a, I'd say over a half dozen times where I'm actually hitting a, uh, a note that's different than that's on the, um, the original record. That's because I'm more, more uh, doing the essence of the lead and getting the feel of it, the essence, not really picking over every note so much. So that's, that's what that's about. Okay, so we're down to this point, going, uh... Now... There's another way, if you want to stay a little more down here, you don't have to go. You could go. Uh, just to another string here. Or you can go. So it's just a choice of what you want to do. And I'm sure that who ever played it in the first place. I think Steve Stills or Doug Doug Hastings or Steve Stills. I think they might have gone. So that would lead me to think that was Steve Stills because he would just be hanging on that string. Um, just wigging out, you know, getting that lead out. Uh, so we'll take it from there. Uh, That's just, that's just some filler. Uh, that, that might even be all wrong right there. I just, this is what I kind of, what I play there, I think. So that would just be like the finger on A string, third fret. And, uh, I think that's like a hammery deal there too. Kind of just blues notes really. Uh, is it? So, uh, that'd be like a lick you could uh, single out just to, to fill that little space. So it's just a matter of notes and sequence. You can learn by rote. Uh. And, and then we'll get to that where there's the double notes in a minute.
what's easy to remember there is just full steps apart. So, da uh, like fifth fret A string, third fret D string, fifth fret D string, then seventh fret D string. which are just these things. What, what, what these are, the easy cool part about this is these are just these things like. That, get, that are used in other songs or whatever. So then you're going. couple of them there so uh so back up and just go slower and more Detail and stuff. Um. be the part of the lead that has like two notes at once which would be and this here just hold down a, like a bar you kind of bounce back from for that part and that's a And it's the uh, D string, one, two, three, four, three, four, three, four, seventh, seventh fret. So filler he just goes I got this many measures of the song doing an overdub the engineers going hey uh, okay we're rolling tape and then he's in there going fill in uh, space it's probably not all worked out so much with, with the left brain he's probably cooking and wigging out they might have even cut a couple of uh, could have done a few tracks and took the best of uh, the few tracks so it's all spontaneous and has all the vibe and the vibe is really what drives this whole thing um the diving into it the the snap you hear on the original record is largely from the tube limiters that they used at uh, sunset sound in the 67 you know, through the 60s and only those limiters are the type that can give that snap at the beginning it, unique only to them and that is where you're getting 
hearing, but that's what you're hearing on the original recording. So to do it live, you dig in a little harder on the attacks to get that spirit. Lighter strings would help. These are not, these are very stiff uh, mediums are very stiff strings. But on the, your acoustic, like a light strings will be, would help that vibe for that song. And I'm sure, I think that's what Steels uses. Those guys, Neil Young, they use like light strings on their uh, Martins and guitars. Um, so uh, when it's heavier strings, to work hard, just plow in harder. So anyway, where were we at? Um, uh, so yeah, <laughs> uh, that part I don't really. I don't really know what goes on to there. It's like that. Oh yeah, what I do is I do a wrong note there. I go. And that's one about the six places I do a completely wrong note uh, when I play it. So it goes... Uh, supposed to go. So, yeah. I'm starting to get it now. So, uh. Let's see. Kind of slide without come if you if that isn't if that comes difficult it just is with time of doing it more at this point i start banging on the guitar i can't on my electric electric it would just break the guitar or something that's a, play very gingerly on the electric but on this guy you can just kind of plow in which makes it fun so um Try to kind of just hit those things. So, um, Do it again slower. So that's where those double notes are. finger. And that's another complete note I don't do right. I'm going to a half stop here. And I've never, I don't play it that way. That's the correct way. I always end up overshooting that. 
I got yeah, I go. I, I skip that. I uh, I always go past that half step, but the half step is very very cool. It was like it's really good. Uh, but like to, I would like to be able to throw that one in there. Okay, so we're, we'll uh, back up a little bit and slow down. Um, I have no idea what's going on and, and what I do is uh, just feel time you go I got to get from this a few more measures the drummers going so you just these blues notes <laughs> one step apart see on the G string here up on the seventh fret same string on the fifth fret then the D string on the fifth on the seventh fret and uh, again on the fifth fifth fret third fret then the A string on the fifth fret Again, an A string on the third fret, and there's, it doesn't really matter what you're hitting it with or what fingers here. It, that don't that doesn't matter. So it's filling in there. Okay, I'll try to make it work how it works with the song. Um, kind of a, a loose approximation of it, not even that probably. Uh... So at least what you're what, what that is you just work with these just these same notes. It's it's very percussive. That's what Steve Stills is about. Very very it had a uh, syncopation in there. So uh, there's a half step in there. sure if there is a half step in there but you could throw it in there and 
finally, um, near the end, it goes. And that's another example. I don't got, I don't have that right down there, but, but what I do sort of captures the essence. Um, so, um, it's the, what I know of it, but like I said, it's not quite all there. It's uh, you're up here on the fifth fret D string. Do half steps down to the third fret. Then do the same thing on the A string. And then same thing on the E string. That last leg I do is wrong, but it, it gets me out of it anyway. So I'll try to... Uh, Improvise. I mean, you, you always are thinking to improvise the whole thing. I'm, I'm sure that uh, Stills never played it at all close to that. I think one time and, uh, there's a recording out there of them live, and there, it's very loosely, there's some licks thrown in their live performance that have some of these licks, but he, he never has played that live like that. So they play, him and Neil play their leads different every time. It's what they feel like that night, that moment. How they feel. They don't. They don't want to uh, go. Oh, I'm going to play this lick just like that, or whatever, like the record, or whatever. <sighs> no. The ending lick is just that. D note on the B string third fret. That little hammery thing again. That note right there is a second fret G string. play a C chord, like a C chord, like a regular C chord, but you just lift your first finger off and you go. And the sound on this hand is just a flamboyant thing. 